Welcome everybody to unit two of your freshman year, where we dive into the topic of guard retention. You remain in guard so long as someone isn't occupying the space between your elbows and knees. All major pins occur when this elbow-knee connection is broken. Guard retention, meanwhile, is the collection of movements and concepts used to protect your elbow-knee connection when retreating back to the open guard. This is in contrast to guard maintenance from more entangled connections and the ability to continue to hold dynamic control over your opponent, which we'll explore next year. The loss of your elbow-knee connection will necessitate a positional escape, usually from a type of pin, and we will likewise explore this more fully during your sophomore year. Since there is often a fine line between retaining guard and escaping from a pin, you may also hear us refer to retention movements and near escapes as guard recovery, which can be considered an all-encompassing term when the guard is under attack. If you recall from some of our introductory lessons, a structural frame is basically an optimal body alignment to overcome the rotational forces caused by an opponent trying to break the guard. This includes not only their mass, but also the muscular forces they are using to weaken your alignment. The best structural frames will utilize the alignment of your bones with your strongest muscles waiting reserve to be recruited if necessary. Before we go into the collection of movements and technical details involved during guard retention, let's briefly look at the body's natural anatomical frames. We can break this unit down into three parts. If the human body were a castle, it would feature an outer wall represented by the soles of the feet, a gate guarded by the intersection of where our hands and remaining parts of our leg meet, and an inner wall guarded by our arms and whatever the trunk of our body can offer. An ideal anatomical frame is furthest away from your core and can track rotational forces threatening to collapse its structure. While on your back in a supine guard, your outermost wall is represented by the soles of your feet in familiar configurations like the coiled leg press and stiff leg. Your legs contain the strongest muscles in your body, so naturally they form the bulk of your body's natural defenses while in such a vulnerable position. However, if you are in a seated guard, your legs function more so in movement, and your extended stiff arms represent your outer walls until you either stand up or are forced to retreat to your back. Legs are very strong, and a big part of guard is being able to recruit multiple shields. So even if the soles of your feet are bypassed, you still have the pointy knob on your shin or the tibial tuberosity and your butt or sacrum, so long as it is aligned with the rest of your spine to act as a barrier. And since most people's straightened arms are capable of reaching to their knees, both your hands and even your elbows, or your olecranon, can assist in protecting your core. These shields working together represent the gatehouse when you are on your back. Finally, when your legs can no longer be used as frames, or if you're in a seated guard, all we have left is our inner walls, which are essentially just your arms and whatever your torso can provide. Functionally, this involves your arm locked out in a stiff arm at the furthest distance, your elbow or the olecranon of the ulna, and your armpit acting as a clamp, utilizing your upper arm or humerus bone and whatever your chest, ribs, and lats can provide. While they can still be used as effective barriers, they are naturally weaker frames than when you can recruit your legs. This is basically your guard's last stand. Great guard retention involves constantly trying to reclaim space and rebuilding your broken frames. Poor guard retention, meanwhile, is when a grappler waves the white flag immediately and starts tearing down their own walls. While they can no longer be used as frames, your legs can still provide vital movement while in base on the floor. Many grapplers struggle to recover guard once the legs are removed as obstacles because they leave them dangling in the air. By finding base with the floor, the legs are able to move and provide space for either the arms to extend or to slip a knee shield back in. Here we see a guard retention drill where the guard player isn't allowed to grab or lock up any entanglements beyond a reverse crab ride hook. If they turtle, they have two seconds to move before they lose the drill. During a drill like this where the bottom player is given a limited set of parameters, they are eventually expected to lose. When faced with a much more aggressive passer who possibly outweighs you by 20 or 30 pounds, you will spend a great deal of time relying on your inner walls as well as trying to keep them at the gatehouse. And every now and then, if you're able to get your outer wall back in place, consider that a victory. Ugh, he's so strong. I might have cheated here a couple times. For a very long time, embarrassingly so, I fell into the practice of immediately retreating to a turtle position as soon as my outer wall was breached. I didn't know any better at the time, and fell in love with being a trickster instead of rebuilding my defensive structures. I unknowingly placed myself in many escaping phases instead of simply retreating to the next line of defense, and then trying to push back to reclaim my lost territory. 
Most of this was born out of a lack of knowledge, but even after learning how to guard recover properly, it took years to rewire my system, and every now and then, when I'm tired, the enemy at the gates gets a free pass to ride the turtle, and I hear my coach in my head yelling at the hot garbage on display. Womp womp.